All right, welcome to the to the next next hour. Uh, we'll be going through the uh, through some issue in the next hour repository. You can um, add your own issues there and uh, upvote existing ones to kind of say that you want something to be covered. Um, so the the one of the most well one of the ones with a single upvote here is getting started reading the next package of source. This is about um, running into problems when trying to develop in next packages and how you can like start reading the source. Um, how can you find what you need? Um, overview how next packages is structured and uh, where common next expressions can be found. For example, make derivation or other builders, I guess. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's something I can cover well. I know next packages fairly well. Um, let's go into here and let's just make sure we have a, uh, let's stash all my files. Let's go to master and let's pull just to get the latest state. All right. So yeah, next packages. Um, well, to kind of start off next packages, the kind of top level structure of attribute sets is specified by the default.next. So the default.next is the default entry point for next, which allows you to run things like next build dash a hello without specifying any file. So this defaults to default.next. So if you run this, you get the same result as just without the file. And but how you actually get from the default.next to the package list to the package listing is a bit more uh, complicated. So I mean in the end it evaluates to an attribute set. Uh, well, not entirely. So, so actually, if you go into next REPL here, this allows us a bit a closer inspection. Uh, let's go into next REPL and then let's do import dot slash default of next. So this just imports the default file and we get the result from that. We can see here the REPL prints a Lambda. Lambda is a function. And so if we actually want any result from that, we need to apply some argument to that lambda. Uh, we can can do it like this, uh, apply an empty argument, and then we get back uh, something quite big. Uh, so next, REPL is rather strict in how it evaluates things uh, to, to some degree, uh, not entirely, uh, but this result here, it will recurse into that. So let's not do that. Let's do instead just, um, uh, let's do lip dot built in dot attribute names. This allows us just to get the listing of attributes in the resulting set, and that works. We get all the packages out of here, and now we can remove these parentheses. In Nick's uh, function application is associative to the left, to the left. Yeah, I think so. So. This and this is the same thing. So we can do this and get the same result. Um, yeah, and so well, the in the in the set here you apply, in the attribute set here, you can set some options. Common things are config.allow un uh, free equals true. You can set overlays to some list of overlays. You can set the system to something else uh, for flakes, especially. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's let's dig a bit into that. Though. How how do we get from the default dot next to the actual attribute set? If we go into here and just look at the default dot next, we get a well. First of all, next packages checks that we have a version that can evaluate the actual next packages. Otherwise, we it fails early and tells you how you can upgrade next. Um, if that's well, and the minimum version is stored in minver.nix in the lib, uh, the lib here. Currently 2.3, this should probably be updated at some point. Uh, if you go to the bottom, the default.nix just delegates to impure.nix, top level slash impure. In impure.nix, if you go into there, that's, uh, as the name says, is, is where all the impurities live in Nix packages. So we, we've talked about this uh, in a couple of previous episodes. There's things like 
config, which by default reads from a couple locations. So it reads the next package's config environment variable. It, it reads in your home directory dot config slash next and so on. Um, and then checks whether those exist and, and uses them if possible. Uh, and this, this is an impurity. Depending on the user, this will change. Uh, so it's really nice how all of these are in the single file. Uh, we also have overlays here. This is rather complicated seemingly. We have a couple locations where overlays can come from again, and it's going to use them when possible. Uh, we also have system here somewhere. Here's system, uh, defaults to local system system, which points to this here, which ultimately points to built-in stock current system, which is an impurity not available in flakes or pre pure evaluation mode. Um, and by the way, the uh, if you have a function here, so this is a function argument, uh, an attribute set function argument, you can recursively refer to other attributes in here. So this is just like a big let in statement looking like let local system equals blah, 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 and then system equals local system dot system. Uh, well, kind of like that, but you can, you can refer to definitions recursively. Yeah, so uh, this is where we got all the impurities. If we go to the bottom again, it imports dot slash dot. Dot slash dot and next um, the, the kind of dot relative to the file is the, the folder this file is currently in. So in this case, it imports dot slash default on next, the default file, and this expands to the, the kind of next packages path, which in my case is uh, packages top level, because we're in the top level directory now. And uh, by the way, top level, that's as the name kind of suggests, it's where the top level attribute set gets defined and all the relevant files around it. Ah, uh, yeah, so we go to the default on next file. Now, I guess Vim can't automatically jump to this file. I'm using GF as a shortcut for that. Uh, so let's go to packages top level default on next manually. All right, and here, so this, this gets into the kind of <laughs> details of next packages a bit more. We have for one, it uh, let's see, we have config here. I saw down here, config gets um, checked somewhere here. Config gets checked. It's actually using the module system, the same one that Nexus uses for that, at least for some options, not for all of them. Um, we also have overlays, which get checked apparently, okay. Um, down here, so I can't go into too many details here, but uh, one of the main parts here is then stage.nex. Stage.nex is kind of internally how next packages is built up. Um, so next packages kind of consists internally of a number of overlays and stage.nex kind of, I guess, stages these overlays on top of each other. Uh, so if you go into stage.nex and to the bottom here, we can see this listing here. This, these are the internal overlays of next packages. So these are applied in order. So first we have these couple overlays, then we have trivial builders and trivial builders is defined in this file itself. So if we go down up here, we can see this is defined in the trivial builders.next file. Uh, if we jump to this, um, we can't apparently. Um, but yeah, trivial builders, we have splice here. This is something with uh, cross compilation and making sure you get the right host and target packages and so on. And here we have the kind of most important thing that's all packages. All packages, if you go to the definition, is defined by importing the all packages.next file. This is where you'll see most of the current packages be defined at the top level. Um, other than that, we also have aliases down here. This is where you usually deprecate things. This is defined in the aliases.next file. If we go into there, 
and we can see uh, yeah, removed packages. We can see deprecated packages. And uh, notably, aliases are not included in CI for next packages. So if you were to use an alias here instead of the actual kind of main definition here, uh, CI would throw an error if you use that in a next packages uh, package. And that's good because aliases, uh, we always want to use the kind of canonical package instead of an alias. All right. Oh, I jumped a bit too much around. Uh, let's go back to stage a bit. Um, other overlays we, we have here are uh, config overrides. That's, I think, something deprecated. But we have this thing here. That's the user overlays. So when you specify overlays equals something, something, as we saw earlier on the, um, yeah, as we saw earlier, this is the actual overlays variable that gets put into here. Um, and so the overlays the user supplies get applied after all of the, well, almost all of the internal overlays. Uh, I, I can't speak much about the STDN overrides here. I think uh, that's something, I, th I think that's also something configurable. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, but so the main the main thing here really is uh, all packages done mix. So let's let's jump into that. And so let's go to here. All right. So this is well at the top. You have some some explanation of this, uh, but it's really just a huge package attribute set declaration here. So um, if we just scroll down a bunch. This is kind of how it looks normally. So we have the attribute definition and a call package for a file uh, towards the file, and then a final argument because call package uh, allows you to override some arguments. And this is pretty much this entire file. Now, not, not all of them look like this. There's also sometimes you need to override an argument, so it looks like this. Sometimes you might have a Python package. Python 3 packages. So if you have a Python package that you want to, or if a package is built using Python and you want to expose this in the top level uh, namespace, then you'd generally use Python 3 packages dot call package. Or you can also do call package and then use access Python 3 in the uh, in the uh, file there. Um, there is, let's look at some other examples here. Uh, sometimes you'll see this. I, I don't think this is a great pattern, but it does exist where if you want something to have special dependencies on Darwin, these are usually passed in like this. Uh, we have, we have some aliases in here as well. Uh, so these are well, non-deprecated aliases at least. Uh, we this is very uh, often used for Python. So if you go to let's go Python packages. So I'm using uh, in Vim. You can make sure that you search at the beginning of the line uh, using a, a caret and then two spaces to kind of get the the beginning there and then Python packages. Uh, this kind of allows you to more directly jump to the definition that's actually at the top level and none of these other ones that are just in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a bit useful. And Python is, it's a bit complicated how that's defined. We have uh, Python interpreters, which is defined up here. That's kind of the canonical way to actually get Python packages. This then, you then propagate attributes from that into the top level namespace, and then you add a whole bunch of aliases for uh, packages for different uh, variants for um, version two, version three aliases, the default two and three version, um, and so on. It's so actually the default Python three version, I think. 
where is that defined? Can't see it right here. Actually, I can see it right here. Python three. Well, it was. Uh, uh, anyways, <laughs> so this is um, all packages dot next, and so to usually usually because most packages are in here, most attributes to actually find something just in next packages, it. Uh, what I usually do, or what I often do, is use rip grep, uh, spelled like this, rip grep. It's, uh, it allows you just to, it's just like a grep, grep, but a bit faster. And I usually do a search like this, so like Python packages equals, and then I find a whole bunch of definitions, uh, then but I guess we might want to restrict it to all packages uh, and then we might also want to do the trick from earlier, and we can't find anything because it's inherited, I believe. That's not a great example. <laughs> we could find Python 3. Oh, and here's the default Python version. Let's, uh, where, where was that? Oh, um, 16.3.4.1. It's here, which, I don't see the other Python definitions we saw earlier around. Okay, so there's apparently two places where Python packages are defined. Um, yeah, the default Python versions three and two are defined here apparently. Uh, so yeah, honestly, this all packages.next file is a huge mess. There is currently an effort uh, led by me to clean this a bit up. Uh, that's gonna come at some point, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and so not only is this all packages.next file a mess, well, it's a mess also because there's no good sorting in here. So like if you if you go to random place in here, you can kind of see, okay, there's a lot of P's here. All right, P, R, D. We get to D, E, O, C. So honestly, that, that's the current convention you just find a place where you have kind of similar letters and, and try to make it not too unorderly. And this kind of works out because a lot of people ed edit this file and we don't want any too many merge conflicts. If everybody would add their definition just at the bottom here, we'd get a merge conflict every time a package gets merged. So some randomized uh, convention for this actually isn't too bad. Uh, but yeah, sorting would also be nice, but it's not super ne necessary. There is also, so up here, there's a comment. It says uh, hash, hash, hash starts at category names. There are some very rudimentary uh, categories in here. If we search for this, uh, we get helper functions. We get, uh, this is not a category. Maintainer tools, we get uh, something that's not a category again, <laughs> build, build support. Uh, yeah, and these categories roughly correspond to the to the directories, but very roughly. We have tools, and as you can see, the third example here is already not in the uh, tools directory. There's also some subcategories, applications, version management. Uh, but yeah, we can. We can find one that doesn't correspond to this fairly soon, I'd imagine. Actually, version management. Okay, that's that's fairly clean, actually. Um, in general, it can be expected. So yeah, that's the mess of all packages on next. Uh, but now if you actually go into these directories, so all of these do a call package into one of these directories or files. And these are in the packages directory. And in there, there is kind of a categorization of packages. And again, there is an effort to kind of improve this. Um, but these categories aren't super obvious, uh, but the current convention is to just try to find a category that somehow works and um, put your package there. So if you just go into a random one, well, the, the typical example, Hello, I know that's in applications. Misc hello uh, is here, uh, but yeah, there's this is fairly 
fairly arbitrary. Um, yeah, so all packages I wanted to, let's see, oh yeah, um, make derivation. Well, let's actually briefly do this. So there is, I, I'm not sure if I should actually recommend that, but it's, it's, I think I should show it here at least. So on well, next REPL, you can pass a path to import that into the scope directly. This way we get all the packages by default. So we have hello here now. Um, there is a built-in to get the location of attribute definitions. That is built-in start unsafe get attrib pause. Uh, this way, the, the first argument is the attribute you want to position off. And the second argument is the actual attribute set. If we do this, we get in here, hello is defined in all packages.nix on line almost 30,000. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of very generic way to, to get that. It doesn't work, work for all of them though. So I think I'll sell lib for example. I'll sell lib. Yeah, if we do that, it gives us null. And that is because well, Nix adds this information internally when you define an attribute set. It doesn't propagate when you modify that in some way. So let's let's try it out here. Let's try unsafe get attribute pause for a on this attribute set. A equals ten, and this does work. And file apparently it just uses the string here. That's a bit weird. Uh, anyways, if we do a Let's say a built-in stop map address. So we map all the attributes of this attribute set. Name, value, and let's say value plus one. Right, if we do this, we get null. So it can't really, that kind of makes sense. It can't easily know what attribute. Well, actually in this case, I guess it could, <laughs> but it doesn't do that. Uh, so yeah, there's some limits and for this also lib, that's the case because if we go into here aliases, it's defined here also lib, um, but aliases at the top, it does a map aliases, which I think just does a map address underneath. Uh, yeah. I wonder about the, the aliases thing, about how high uh, the Next packages CI removes those. You can also manually set this or manually try this out with, I think, sorry, remove uh, aliases. I think I might have uh, aliases config alias. Let's try some crapping here. Oh, allow aliases. All right, so yeah, um, if if I don't know what exactly uh, something is called, I usually do something like rip rep here. Sometimes it also, so in this case, I was lucky because alias was matched here, but um, it didn't match the alias here. So I might want to do dash i. Uh, I think that's a common flag for ignoring the casing of values. And this way we get also matches for uppercase alias. Ah, uh, yeah, but grepping is kind of the, an easy way to go about that. Uh, so it was allow, oh, no, it wasn't allow aliases. It was, oh, and the ordering is not deterministic. Enable, enable alias, no, allow aliases. Yes, so we can simulate this by passing this config option ourselves. So let's, for example, try let's see, alsa lib. Let's see, what do we have here? We have t worlds, which uses alsa lib. Let's go in here and do alsa lib. Let's go up here. Let's replace alsa dash lib with alsa lib without a dash. And let's go down here and do the same. Also lib. 
All right, now we can still build that. Or actually, let's not build it, let's instantiate it. Uh, so if you do just next instantiate, the it will evaluate the package and the derivation, but it won't build it. This way you can test that the next code actually works without having to wait for the build to, to succeed. Uh, the alternative is also just to stop once you see the build going. So let's try this, T worlds. So this works. Um, now let's try setting the config to allow uh, allow aliases, yes. So we do this with dash dash arg. Dash dash arg allows us to pass arguments to the, oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't showed this. Allows us to pass arguments to the top level function in next packages. Uh, actually, this requires a bit more knowledge because why does next instantiate work just like this? If we make a, a test file, let's call it t.next and set some edges in here. So a equals 10 and b equals 20. Um, when we evaluate this, so let's do next instantiate or yeah, let's next instantiate dash dash eval t.next. Now dash a and then autocomplete, we get a and b as we would expect. But also if we make this a function, so let's just do dot, 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 I guess, and try the same. So next instantiate eval t.next dash a, we still get a and b. Even though we changed the function, the next instantiate somehow automatically called this function for us. And so this happens automatically on the old command line uh, if you have a function that can be called without arguments or where all the arguments have a default value. So if we were to say, um, let's say foo, so just add an argument, but we don't provide a default. We try this again. So uh, let me copy this so I don't need to type it all the time. Uh, now I hit, I hit tab and it doesn't work. So it can't auto call it anymore. If we add a default here, foo, it should work again. Dash A, tab, and it can auto complete these. Um, yeah, and so this is exactly what happens in next packages where we have this top level impure function up here. So this is the function, the top level function of next packages, which has the these arguments, these config overlays and so on. But these all have default values here. You can see the question mark and the default value. So we have config, we have overlays um, and there's well, it accepts more arguments, but there's no arguments that require uh, to be passed a value. And this is what makes just next build dash a hello work. Instead of you having to do something like next instantiate eval, and then let's do dash e, and then um, let's do import uh, dot slash dot, and then passing the argument here. So, um, yeah, this, this also works, but it's it's really annoying to do. So this shorthand for just next instantiate dash a hello is very convenient for that. Um, I, I kind of lost track of where I was. Double level packages. Uh, let's see. Finding expressions, make derivation. Yeah, I guess we could maybe take a look at this. I, th I thought I lost some some train of thought there. Um, but yeah, let's go for... Talking about aliases. Uh, what? You were talking about aliases uh, before you switched to... Oh. The sheet. Yeah, yeah, right. And you, we wanted to test that. It's gone again. Oh, just now? Yes. Ooh. 
as soon as I unmuted. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, so let's try out the simulate. Right, we, we did this. We modified the T-worlds, and now let's try this again. So next instantiate a T-worlds. That works. But now let's simulate what CI does. So let's pass dash dash, dash arc. Right, uh, right, that's how I got to it. Uh, with dash dash arc, you can actually pass arguments that have been defaulted and override them. Let's briefly go back to our example here. Um, T.next foo, and let's inherit foo here so we can see the value. And now let's do next instantiate eval t.next dash a foo. But now let's do arc foo, uh, let's do one plus one. All right, that gives us that result. There is also arc string. Arc string allows you to, so arc uh, allows you to specify a next expression. Arc string allows you to specify a string like literally. So you can say blah here, and that will use the string blah. And so generally, because I think it's kind of bad to, to pass around next, actual next expressions, Generally, arc string is the safer option if it works. Uh, so this way, we also don't have any escaping problems because, I mean, let's say we have some uh, some quotes here and, and some escapes and some new lines and so on. Uh, and actually, this is not a new line. This is in, yeah, this isn't a new line. And yeah, ne next just kind of can handle that. Uh, because it escapes it properly into Nix. All right, now, finally, let's try evaluating T worlds with arc config. So we want to overwrite the config argument because that's where uh, the allow, allow aliases is passed. And now here we use dash dash arc, not arc string, because we want to set a Nix expression. And then here we can then set attribute set allow aliases equals false. And we get a, a good error message. This is actually nice. This is an error message I myself added, which kind of suggests you, suggests you attributes that kind of look similar. So in this case, very helpful. It actually says else dash lib. Uh, so we could go back in there and make that uh, revert that change to make it work again. Let's uh, do that and do a grhh git reset hard head, I think. I kind of just resets the files and try this again. And this time it works because we have the uh, alza dash lib again. All right. So I think let's. Uh, well, uh, briefly, are there any questions about these things? Otherwise, we'll move on. All right. Otherwise, feel free to interrupt if you have a question. Uh, so let's go for make derivation now, the arguable, arguably most common function to build derivations. So let's just do the thing we tried earlier. Let's try make derivation equals to find uh, the definition. And um, there are a couple results here. We could also try this. I don't think this will work. And, and notably, make derivation is under stdenv. So if we, if we go in here, it's next instantiate dash a stdenv dot make derivation. So it's actually not even at the top level. It's under stdenv. So I guess for that, we could try stdenv first equals. But also, there's a lot of options here, and it's really unclear what the right one is. Um, so I happen just to just know where make derivation is actually defined. But let's try to dig into this a bit uh, more manually if we really want to do this. Uh, the kind of better way. So, so let's try to use the unsafe get attributes we saw earlier. So let's try that as TTNF and packages. This is defined in stage.nix. All right, let's go there. 
Uh, let me open a new tab here. Let's go in here and uh, the it was on line 138. All right, so it's defined here. Okay, now where does this stdn variable come from? Uh, I think there is a next language server that could jump to the definition of this. Uh, I don't have that installed though. I think it's called nils, nil, yeah, nil. If you want to check that out, I, I would like to do that as well at some point. Uh, here's the post. You can find it on this course. Oh, and uh, Oxalica is the username on GitHub. Uh, so that might be interesting, but for now, I'm just going to use the vim command ha uh, hash. This jumps to the, I think, previous instance of the string I'm currently under. So if, if I hit this a couple of times, we get to here, stdn. So it's passed in as an argument to stage.nix. We saw this earlier where stage.nix is called. That's in the default.nix file. Let's go to stage.nix here. All right, it's imported here. Uh, we have new args here. All right, so stdn isn't in here, so it must come from new args here. Uh, so this is all packages. Where does all packages come from and how is it called? Okay, it's passed into booter here. So it's apparently called in there. Let's go into there. stdn booter, all packages, all right. All packages is called here. Oh, this is a this is a rabbit hole, and uh, so we have uh, this here that's passed. stdn isn't in here, so it must be in the args prime here. Where is args prime? It's up here. Oh, and here we have some stdn, but it's not the actual definition. So let's go into args here. Oh man, what am I doing? Oh, um here stage fun <laughs> this isn't very fun to be honest <laughs> but so we got going to your stage fund oh it's called by folder okay honestly i'm a bit at the point where i want to give up this is a bit painful so okay, I'm, I'm just going to tell you the, the the solution it's in packages stdn generic <laughs> So in generic, we can see the make derivation.next function here. Uh, make derivation, let's go into that. Uh, yeah, and so here we have, let's go down here. Yes, here it starts. This is the function definition. Um, all right, we also have a short explanation. It wraps the built-in derivation, which itself wraps derivation strict. Um, all right, uh, we also have some, some documentation. I actually wonder if the documentation points out where this function is defined. That would maybe be useful. Uh, it's generic. Nope. Uh, ST setup.sh is mentioned here. It doesn't seem to be the case though. Uh, but yeah, so here, this is the make derivation function. We can see some of the arguments here, but you'll note that these are a bit unusual. Uh, well, native build inputs uh, is there, but there are a whole bunch of these steps build, build, steps build, targets, steps host, host. And these, if you really want to go into the, the cross compilation uh, specifics, these are useful in, in these cases. Uh, there is also, so actually we were right here, cross compiling, cross compilation, uh, not here. Oh yeah, here, this is the section 6.3, specifying dependencies. Uh, if you wanna, wanna read about this, you can do this here. Um, this has some good explanation for that. 
Um, yeah, uh, we have bill inputs. We have some flags, configure flags. Um, checking strict depths. Strict depths is a nice thing, by the way, if you want to be sure you have the right dependencies for cross compilation as well. Uh, parallel billing, notably disabled by default. If you want to enable it, you need to explicitly set this to true. This is done because of non-determinism in a lot of parallel builds. Uh, we have uh, meta, we have pass through. These two notably don't influence the derivation result. So you can, you can change these without making a different derivation. Uh, pause, this is, oh yeah, this is actually interesting. So earlier we used the unsafe get attribute pass to find the position of an attribute in packages, but there is also somewhat of a built-in version of this. And that is let's do hello.meta.position. This points you a bit more directly to the actual file where things are defined. So instead of uh, so unsafe get attribute pause hello packages, this points us to all packages.next. The meta.position points us into the actual hello uh, default.next file directly. And so specifically line 34, if you go into that, we can see what is on there. And it's the description of the file of the package. And so what it actually does underneath, it does a unsafe get attribute pass for description of packages.meta. Uh, packages.hello.meta. This is where it gets line 34 from. And the implementation for that is in the default.next file, uh, in the make derivation we saw earlier. So if you're going to make derivation again here, pause, we can see this implemented here. So uh, checks whether there is a description. If there is, it gets it from unsafe get attribute pause. Apparently also uses version and name otherwise. Uh, notably, by the way, name is a required attribute for derivations. So if you omit that, you get an error, which is why this code can assume it exists. And this is also, also the case for make derivation. You need to specify a name. Um, some other bits here, we can see uh, sandbox profile, I'm not sure what that is. Hardening enable, these are some default compiler flags which make it a bit more secure. Patches, content address, I am not too familiar with that. Structured address, that is, uh, th that's neat. We could maybe take a quick look at that. So traditionally, how derivations worked is that, let's, let's go in here and write a small one. Uh, let's do again the next packages and let's do packages stdinf dot make derivation. So traditionally, if you specify, oh, let's do run command test. And yeah, if you specify variables in the derivation, so let's say foo equals bar, you get these as environment variables. So now we can do echo foo and put this to the into the output file. Uh, out is implicitly set to the output. Uh, if we run this, let's do save and let's do a next build t.next and cat result. We get bar in the result. Okay, that works. But in a lot of cases, you have more structured attributes you want to pass to the build. So let's say we have some say foo and uh, v1 equals bar and v2 equals pass. All right, now if you try this, uh, let's see what happens. We get an error. Oh, yeah, and the error is can occur coerce a set to a string. So next underneath tries to coerce this value here to a string so it can set a bash variable. It does this using the toString uh, built-in function, also available as built-in.toString. Um, 
Yeah, and if we try this out here, let's go into next REPL, do two string three plus 10, it doesn't work. Uh, it does work for simple variables uh, or like most primitives, I think all primitives. So we can curse integers, we can curse uh, floats. And uh, notably floats, the output uh, precision is a bit weird. It always has six, uh, six floating point, six numbers after the floating point, even when you have a more precise number. So it actually loses precision when it does this. Arguably back, there's an open issue for this though. Um, then also Booleans. Booleans are also a bit weird. It uses the kind of bash uh, uh, representation of Booleans where an empty string is false and something not an empty string is true. Um, null also, uh, oh yeah, null apparently also works, empty string. Um, did I miss anything? Paths are not done using two string directly. So if you do lib here, two string would return this path. So the path itself uh, without importing into the store. If we do, uh, let's do two string lib here. Let's see what the result is. It actually, oh, oh, uh, we used two string here. Let's remove that. Let's use the implicit handling. And that actually does import it into the store. So it's it's not exactly the same. Ah, uh, yeah, but, oh, and notably the kind of arguably uh, uh, silliest thing about this implicit conversion is that lists also work. Uh, but in a weird way where, let's say we have foo bar here, it just concatenates the elements using a space between them and that without any escaping. So if we have some weird quotes in here, it's not gonna escape them in any way. This messes up when you, when you use that in bash, uh, because if you have a space in here, Bash can't distinguish between those, this and this element uh, being just two. So if you try this out here, let's do foo equals bar baz cux. And um, well, I mean, it's just a string. So uh, it's, it's, oh. I want to do this. So it's just a string. So yeah, there's no way for batch to distinguish this. The kind of way to make this better is to explicitly use uh, lib.strings.escape shell arcs. Escape shell arcs does proper shell escaping. So while if we do just this, we still get the same, well, no, we don't get the same result, but it's not read into a bash array just yet. If we want to actually do that, we need something like eval uh, foo array equals this, I believe. A bit convoluted, but eval foo array like this, and then we should be able to loop through that. So let's do uh, item in foo like this, and then we need some escaping for next multi-line strings. All right, do done, and then echo item is item. Let's try this, and it failed. Ah, because it didn't produce an output. Let's just make sure that works. And that didn't work. Is it? I can actually just do declare p. Oh, I used I used foo not foo array. All right, and now we can see the individual items here. So 
If you want to properly propagate lists to bash, you can do this. Um, and by the way, there's also declare. I just realized we can just print a variable like this, which is much easier than this. Declare p that prints it as like this. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so this works at least for lists. But uh, as we said earlier, if we want to have a like attribute set, it doesn't work. So this is where this is where structured address comes in. So we can do structured address equals true. And well, this won't work just like this. But what structured address does, it's it's gonna serialize all of the variables we pass here as JSON. It's going to put all of those into JSON file, which you can then uh, inspect in the build. So uh, the, JSON, the JSON file is put, or the JSON string is put into the address.json file, I believe. So let's just kind of cut that to out. Yes, that's a useless use of cat, but I'm going to stick with it for now. Um, Oh, and there's some, okay, there's some things that don't work with run command, I believe. Uh, let's do stdnf.make derivation instead. So it's it's an opt-in thing at the moment, and it's not super well supported, I believe. There is a PR to improve that, though. All structured, uh, not in my browser history. Uh, so let's do make derivation here. Let's pass a name, uh, test. Um, let's then do build command, maybe. And structured address. Let's see, does this work? Uh, I have a mistake here. Uh, set of, uh, okay. I'm going to have to look this up a bit. So structured address, let's look at some examples in here. We have uh, maybe this. Oh, uh, apparently this path build. Let's see, is this something we need to do? Apparently not. Um, no such file or directory. Setup. Oh, I, I do believe it might have to do with this kind of, yeah, with a builder. I think the default builder calls setup.shell, which doesn't exist. Um, let's just see, we don't have a lot of time. Atrus, it's not in here. Let me briefly search for the issue on GitHub. So defaults, structured Atrus. What's the screen share? Oh, thank you. Um, da, 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 da is open oh it's not here structured address support opt-in um okay there's apparently an issue to, to document it properly um uh, this is kind of unfortunate i wanted to have a good example here we might have to just do, so this just uses a builder, to file builder. Oh, and this does use run command. I don't think I was too far off. Uh, let's see, can I make it work in like two minutes? Structured address. So all of these use this kind of path and builder structure. So maybe let's just copy that. Right, and apparently this is also needed. Tdl next, 
Um, let's do this path is that. Let's also move packages to make this work. Builder and now let's do cat address.json into out. And this apparently works. Now let's just format this with jq, uh, jq, bin jq. All right. And the errors. Oh, it uh, can't contain jq. Fair enough. We'd have to put it here. Oh, jq is already there. Never mind. All right. And so we can see here that the address.json file contains foo as it is in the attribute directly, which is kind of neat uh, for the future. And I do believe there somewhere there should be an issue to make it the default uh, at some point. So this becomes uh, much nicer. Uh, yeah, we are out of time, but I hope this was useful. And uh, yeah, see you next week.